2022 Acura MDX SH all-wheel drive Advantage. Yes, I am doing well, thank you. This is RCR's website. This is where you click to submit your car for review. This is where you buy merch. This is where you sign up for bonus content and... There are successful people, and then there are people who have an I got screwed story chambered for every conversation. There are people who look at others for inspiration, and those who look at others with envy. There are those who understand that government administrators are merely tools available for rent. And then there are those who believe that politicians will act with charity? On their own best interest? Please. Acura MDX, brought to you by... I don't want to look rich, but I want you to recognize. $60,000, yes, but this is the official car of someone who owns a quarter share of a Cirrus Vision Jet. Mm, delightful. There is a sport mode on this car, yes, but that doesn't suit an MDX. No, no. Use comfort mode. Frankly, it's the only way to get acceptable ride quality out of these mm, contemporary 20-inch wheels. Do you remember Manny Fresh's Real Big? Remember those halcyon days when rolling through East Egg on 20s? meant something? Now family SUVs come with them. Does a new MDX driver go to church often? Irrelevant. The, an MDX owner is who the church treasurer seeks out when the church needs money. This is the most you can pay for an Acura MDX. The SH all-wheel drive Advantage model, let me tell you, worth every penny. That means, well, do. Do put it in sport mode. Once. Just once. On a gravel road and give it your beans from a stop. It will accelerate with defiant persistence, thanks to its intelligent all-wheel drive system, which is active all the time. The collision mitigation warning system is... Hmm, brutal is the right word. It did save my carriage house door when it, when I unfortunately misjudge my entrance, uh, all four brakes lock on when the Acura comes within one and a half to two inches of an object. It feels like I hit something. The calipers clamp close faster than a human can press the pedal down. Uh, it's, perhaps it's a variation of a line lock. Are you uh, tired of Rich Brian, this character I'm playing? <laughs> Too bad. Yes, this is another press car. What did I do with it? Mmm, take a guess. Yes, these are Appalachian through hikers. They were quite impressed with a beautiful clean car. Don't worry, I had my people clean this car before giving it back. This machine is a comprehensive delight. It does everything you would need. It has all the features you would expect to have, especially for this price. You're still dwelling on the price, aren't you? Hmm. Interesting. I find it bizarre that uh, a seven-seat car can move like this. It really comes down to that delightful ten-speed transmission. You cannot even get to tenth gear until at least 68 miles an hour. And the parlor trick is it does not even look like a seven-seater. But when you're in the driver's seat and you check the rearview mirror, it's a delightful uh, funhouse house of mirrors, like on the Jersey Shore. You know, when you're slumming it. And if you have a, a big family with nephews and nieces and siblings and spouses that, you know, maybe they have to take the same car. <laughs> this is what you want. Nick Roman couldn't stop raving about it. Because this is the automotive version of that feeling you get when the gang's all here. It's a fun car to drive by yourself, yes. But it really shines when you use the cabin talk feature to communicate with people 
in the third row without even raising your voice. Yes, it's an in-car intercom. And it shines when you can comfortably get people in the third row without having mangled limbs and ruined upholstery from sneakers on the surface of this beautiful leather. It makes it look like somebody spilled a cliff bar on there and rubbed it in. This car is also a Wi-Fi hotspot if you're unfortunately unfortunate enough to not be able to afford a uh, unlimited data plan. It also has Alexa and Sirius Radio, of course, and a LAN party's worth of charging ports so nobody's Nintendo Switch has to die on the trip. Sitting up front, everything is so well integrated. It has to do with the relative simplicity of the steering wheel controls and the fully digital gauge clusters, which Acura calls the precision cockpit. It makes this car feel much more nimble the way it holds you. I also remember some devilish evenings at the Precision Cockpit. It's a pilot's only bar. They serve something called a whiskey sour, but it has a physical element too. Mm. Folks in the middle row can control their own air, so you don't have to ask them what they want. They can choose it themselves. You don't have to ask, are you comfortable enough? You know that they are. That's what you're paying for here. This car possesses all the grace of a waiter who's genuinely interested in a customer's rambling backstory between breadstick refills. That collision mitigation braking system I was talking about uses a radar transmitter and the forward-facing camera to gauge distance and closing speed of obstacles in your path. So it'll begin light braking if you don't reduce speed. If you can't avoid a collision... I'm tired of doing this character. If you can't avoid a collision, it'll break hard for you and try to mitigate impact velocity. But the main point of the system is not to need it, since various alerts will remind you about your speed and your proximity to any potential issues ahead. With the hope being that the system never actually has to engage the brakes for you, but it's there if you need it. And that's why it's called a collision mitigation system. They know not to call it collision avoidance. This thing's not going to stop you from having a crash. It's just going to stop you from going as fast when you do. The adaptive cruise control is great. Low speed follow is great. Has a tendency to turn off from time to time. So if you're going stop, go, stop, go traffic, like when you come to a full stop after a while, sometimes it won't go until you just tap the gas and then it restarts the system. You're enveloped in this vague feeling that while the outside world might be a mess, you're good inside here of this rolling box of gears and technologies, you're secure. Acura MDX, the automotive equivalent of a man who doesn't worry about the ups and downs of his home life because marriage is like Sonic the Hedgehog. As long as you still have one ring, there's a chance to turn things around. Now, fuel economy isn't really what you want it to be, ideally. This is a big car, after all. On an 18 and a half gallon fuel tank, the EPA estimated fuel mileage is 19 city and 25 highway. I mean, it could be worse. The real focus of this car is that 10 speed transmission. It's constantly trying to keep this car like just below like the torque peak to try to keep your mileage up. As for the engine, and the engine's nothing new. It's the J series. The J series still going strong. We had it all the way back in the, the, the beautiful Honda Accord 6MT, and they've been using this in the Odyssey, the everything. It's just like Toyota with their V6. They gradually have been upping the power over the years. Now it has direct injection. It's a very lean burning thing. And it's making about 290 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 267 pound-feet of torque at 4,700 RPM. This is the fourth generation of the MDX. And it's currently... Acura's flagship vehicle because they killed off the RLX line last June. And this also skipped the 2021 model year, which I think would have been its 20th anniversary. So missed opportunity there. But what are you going to do? The MDX was originally introduced in 2001 to scoop up the premium SUV market, utilizing Honda's midsize platform. Back then, it had a 3.5 liter V6. And now, Still, 3.5 liter V6. Only back then, before they were doing direct injection and everything, it was making 240 horsepower, and now we're up to 290. Back then, it had the VTM4 all-wheel drive system, 
and now it has what Acura calls the super handling all-wheel drive system. Acura says it applies 45% of the engine power to the rear wheels and engages, quote, additional available traction, according to their website. What I experienced is it does the classic electronic throttle, hey, I want full power right now and the road service ain't that great. And the computer goes, okay, hang on. I'll figure out what's going on and then I'll give you power. And it does work. There's very little wheel slip. I intentionally was trying to make this car slip on the, those bits of Pennsylvania roads where all the gravel accumulates at a corner. You know, it's terrifying on a motorcycle. And there's this little setting. Sorry, I don't have a picture of it. There's a little setting where it shows you how much power is going to each wheel with a little animation. It's really small and it's on the main gauge and it's tiny. You really shouldn't be looking at it, but it's there. I find this to be more stylish than your average family SUV, but it's not vulgar. It doesn't display that you have money, but inside this leather is warm and friendly. I feel like I'm being welcomed into an exclusive airport lounge. Yes, I belong here. The real focus of this car is the comfort mode. I hardly ever took it out of it. It's amazing how hard it has to work because these 20 inch wheels and these tiny tires, we want 20s now, great. You, you do hit this graveyard of Pennsylvania potholes everywhere and it handles it. Handles it way better than I thought it would. And some of that comes down to these seats. I love these seats. They're 16 way power seats, power lumbar support, Oh, thigh extension support, side bolstering, amazing. It does wonders when you're driving around all day. <laughs> uh, Rich Brian is back. You ever have a long day of driving and get out and discover your back is not exploding with agony? That's the Acura MDX. It's like having cheesecake for the first time after you got off of a steady no sugar diet. The walk away close on the power tail lift gate was enough to impress some people we showed this to, because it's not something a lot of people would think to want. I mean, really, it's, it's a pretty low priority on the quality of life scale, but when your hands are full with groceries or furniture or plants or whatever, you just want to be able to walk away and not have to put things down or come back later to close the tailgate. It's the ideal feature for anybody who's ever had to bring a couch home from unclean. This car does have some problems that are worth getting into, even if I don't think they're deal breakers. For one, I'm not really a fan of this touchpad interface for the hub, and I know why this exists here. It has a trackpad, like a computer, and a little wrist thing. And the screen up here, that's not a touchscreen. You have to use the trackpad to go through menus and everything. And that's a driver distraction. It's a big driver distraction because it's like a Bat. It's like a it's like a cheap Lenovo trackpad there, like on a work like on a workstation laptop. The like the cheapest one your company could possibly get, the type of laptop that still has a mechanical hard disk, and it's not accurate. You can get used to it, and there are some physical controls that can control things on the on on the menu up there, and you can customize your steering wheel to do most of the multifunction display work for you. But giving this car to someone and having them figure out this trackpad is tough. But I guess they needed more options than using a BMW style, you know, iDrive system. And I know why. See, okay, all we, all we really want is a place to put our phone or maybe a monitor inside the car that just doubles whatever our phone is doing, like, like a portable monitor. But that encourages people to use the phone or at least is condoning the use of using your phone while driving. And that's a liability. You can't do that. So we're still relying on these multifunction display screens to kind of take the place of your phone because this, the car will pair to your phone and you can do everything through your phone, but you can't touch your phone. You got to use this trackpad because just like Pennsylvania's weird alcohol laws this Acura is jumping through crazy hoops to allow you to use your phone while driving. And that's what this trackpad is for. 
The Acura MDX is not going to rewrite the way you look at SUVs if you're not someone who'd consider an SUV. But I do think it would make you do at least a double take. And to call this an SUV is kind of a stretch. It's more of a crossover. If you're buying this, you're not taking it off-road, even though I'm sure the all-wheel drive system is fantastic. It's like buying an Evo 9. Yes, one of the best all-wheel drive systems ever made. Do people really take this in the dirt? Unless they're just going to throw the car away. No. But this car is so enjoyable, especially when you bring it around to other people and get, and get to live vicariously through their own sense of wonder. Yes, a car can be this good. This is the car for the person who just doesn't want to be seen, but wants to enjoy being carried places. I wish I had longer the, with this. I just wanted to drive and drive and drive. I liked watching people's eyes go wide when they realized how good this interior was. They, they were going wide like a bad boss's eyes in the moment an employee finally tells them to shove it. The realization that the employee doesn't need them anymore, and now they have one less person in their lives to extract ego-inflating obedience from. I love seeing eyes go wide with the disbelief when people get in a car like this. It's like, how could a luxury crossover geared toward families be this good? Well, this is for a different type of family. Don't hate. The type of people who are buying these things, $60,000, it's nothing to them. Acura MDX SH all-wheel drive advantage. Don't worry about what other people are doing. You focus on you. Because I want you to be part of this world someday. This is possible. This is obtainable. But on the other hand, this is cutting edge car tech. And tech moves really, really fast. One of the reasons I like late 90s cars and into the early 2000s cars so much is that they're continuously upgradable with modern technology because everybody makes single and double din setups, you know, for your head unit that just put all the technology in there because it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. These interiors in here, there's no going back from them. You, you can't retrofit this in 10 years to whatever, whatever we're going to need. All this integrated technology, it's fantastic. It's going to be fantastic for maybe 10 years. And then it's going to be like that 2000s tech when they remember when they started like for no reason integrating radio controls and heater controls into the same unit. And now you're stuck with a car that only plays CDs. So you're relying on that little cigarette lighter broadcasting thing for your Bluetooth. Yeah, rough. So what's the move with a car like this? Lease it? No, it's not fancy enough. It's not flashy enough to... Uh, to, to, to justify a lease. A 60,000 Acura MDX SH all-wheel drive advantage. This is a car that you buy. You buy with cash. And because it's a Honda, you drive it for 10 years worry-free, just general maintenance. And at the end of that 10 years, you sell it because it's a Honda. Of course, it's going to retain its value. And then you buy whatever next latest technology is. Don't hate. That's how successful people roll. And I'm happy I got to experience this delightful car. Delights in life that happen far too infrequently. So when you come across something that genuinely surprises you, it's hard to wear a poker face. Even if it's really that good, you shouldn't want to anyway. Enjoy things openly even if that feeling catches you by surprise. Have a great week. Let him go, Trent. Mr. Regular? I said let him go or else. Or else what? Or else this. 40 minutes later. Hey man, thanks for saving me back there. I really messed up my writing hand trying to punch that guy. I think I need athletic tape or something. No problem, he was a dick. I'll say. It was dumb of him to bring me and Betty back to the present just to ditch us at an Argentinian airport. But now that I am back in the present, I just want to go home and sleep. Uh, hey, uh, did you take care of the stove thing? Uh... 
Oh, come on! What the fuck? <laughs> What will happen next week on Romance Time Trap? No, that, that, that's it. That's the last one. Okay.